Raynaud phenomenon is an exaggerated vasospasm of the digits, usually in response to cold exposure or stress. It can be classified as either primary or secondary. Primary Raynaud's, which is also called Raynaud's disease, suggests that these symptoms occur alone, without evidence of a systemic disorder. Secondary Raynaud's suggests that it's associated with a related, often rheumatoid illness. Systemic illnesses causing secondary Raynaud's are sneaky, slimy syndromes, starting with S. Systemic sclerosis, systematic lupus erythematosus, and Sjogren's syndrome. An important distinction to remember here is that secondary Raynaud's can cause a digit-threatening medical emergency called critical digital ischemia, while primary RP does not. Our skin's superficial circulation has two main branches, nutritional capillary loops and arteriovenous anastomoses, or AVAs. Capillary loops function to remove waste and provide nourishment to the cells. Meanwhile, AVAs act as the major thermoregulatory vessels in the skin. When it's really cold, AVAs more strongly vasoconstrict, shunting blood from superficial to deep. Our vasoconstrictor reflexes has a greater impact on these AVAs because they are richly innervated by the sympathetic nervous system and have lots of alpha-2 adrenergic receptors. Although normal vasoconstriction decreases skin blood flow during cold conditions, we can still maintain that nutritional flow via compensatory vasodilation. Now, vasoconstriction and dilation are mediated by different endothelial mediators, including endothelium-derived nitric oxide. This inhibits vascular smooth muscle contraction. Similarly, prostaglandins, like prostacyclin, are vasodilatory. In contrast, though, endothelin-1 is a potent vasoconstrictor and is only released during an abnormal vascular response in secondary forms of Raynaud's phenomenon. Now, the cause of primary RP is thought to be a local defect in the affected part of the peripheral circulation. Patients have abnormal adrenergic receptors or locally dysregulated endothelial responses in their digits. They exhibit reduced digital blood flow via AVAs, but this flow is preserved in the nutritional capillaries. Thus, patients with primary RP don't develop critical ischemia. Secondary RP results from various diseases, so multiple different mechanisms might be involved. In secondary RP, patients exhibit both reduced digital blood flow via AVAs and a reduction in those nutritional capillaries. Thus, they're more likely to develop critical ischemic events. Both primary and secondary Raynaud phenomenon most commonly affects the digits, like the fingers and toes. But the thumb is often spared in primary RP, but not secondary. Attacks typically begin in a single finger and then spreads to the other digits. This usually occurs symmetrically in both hands with a sharply demarcated color difference. Attacks last for 15 to 20 minutes if they're rewarmed, followed by blushing upon recovery. Attacks can be considered severe if they cause pain. This is an indication of ischemia and can be acute or chronic. Chronic ischemia refers to tissue injury due to prolonged or progressive reduction in flow. Chronic ischemia commonly leads to digital ulcerations. Acute ischemia, or critical digital ischemia, refers to a rapid onset attack where tissue viability is threatened. In addition to evaluating the patient for possible conditions associated with secondary RP, you can perform nail fold capillary microscopy. This is a common method to help you distinguish between primary and secondary RP. You use a dermatoscope on the proximal nail fold to inspect capillary morphology. Normal morphology is looped and evenly distributed. In systemic sclerosis, though, vessels are branching and unevenly distributed. 
The management of Raynaud's requires non-pharmacological and pharmacological measures. Non-pharmacological measures might include advice about avoidance of cold exposure, avoidance of vasoconstricting drugs, and smoking cessation advice and support. Pharmacologic interventions include calcium channel blockers like amlodipine, which can be used daily as a first-line option. Otherwise, angiotensin II receptor blockers, or ARBs, can be used. Another option is a topical nitrate applied with an ointment. This is more useful for patients with a single, severely affected digit. For patients with severe ischemia that threatens a digit, remember this is an emergency, like a AAA. It requires analgesia, like an opioid, plus or minus a local anesthetic or regional block. Anticoagulation with intravenous unfractionated heparin due to the associated risk of arterial thrombosis. Alprostadil, which is an intravenous prostaglandin that acts as a potential vasodilator. Let's recap with some mnemonics. Systemic illnesses causing secondary Raynaud's are sneaky, slimy syndromes, starting with S, such as systemic sclerosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, and Sjogren's syndrome. Pharmacologic management can work. Calcium channel blockers, angiotensin II receptor blockers, and nitrates. Finally, severe ischemia requires AAA therapy. Analgesia, anticoagulation, and alprostadil. Thanks for watching Townsend Teaching.